Hello folks and welcome. So I am redoing this video. Um, this has to do with the uh, Linux Mint backup tool and I do apologize for the folks that started to watch that because I pulled that video after realizing there were several errors in there. So I'm uh, hopefully making up for this. I'm going to be redoing this video. This video is going to be about the Linux Mint backup tool for Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon and also the Edge version. Um, you can probably use this for LMD6 also. But in either case, I'm going to talk about the backup tool, show you how to use it, how to backup and restore. I'm also going to talk about GRSync and also script files for at the end of this um, and, and toward the end of the video. So there's something for everyone possibly on this video for backups or just moving files from one system to another, such as uh, Linux to Microsoft to Macs. So welcome folks. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 so you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary with that gear symbol because a lot of your YouTube players default to 460. It's a lot less screen res than I'm filming it. So I'm going to use Alt and F4 and uh, the first thing I'm going to make mention again is I apologize for the users that started to watch that video. But in either case, hopefully this will make up for it. And for the users that are non-subscribers, may I encourage that you subscribe. That way you can watch this video and others in multiple sittings at your leisure. And uh, also you will have access to the other 230 plus videos that I have on my YouTube site on all kinds of tips and tricks. And for you brand new users, don't forget to check out the community tab in case you do not know how to use keyword searches on my YouTube site and uh, all my videos are indexed with keywords. Also, my About uh, section has also some links for you. All right, now that that's all over with, let's talk about maybe some hard drive stuff. All right, so Bob is our user for today. It's just a made up name. So Bob has some files he want, uh, would like to either back up or just maybe transport over to a different system. Maybe you want to uh, copy some documents, maybe some music, maybe some pictures and share that with maybe a Microsoft system or maybe a Mac system. Well, there's different things to think about during this video. So the first thing I'm going to show is this device here. It's a USB hard drive. And uh, when we are thinking about moving files from Linux to some other system like Microsoft Windows or maybe uh, Apple Macs, we need to think about the formats. So if you are brand new to Mint, uh, welcome. There is a tool called USB Stick Formatter. Now, because this is a USB connected hard drive to a USB port, the tool will see it, the stick formatter that is. So instead of a USB stick, another people call this thumb drives maybe, and I will let you see that it found that drive. So this is a PNY, that's a manufacturer, CS900. It's a 240 gigabyte solid state drive. So I'm going to use that to my benefit. So I am going to format that how. What is the choices in here? Well, we have FAT32, we have XFAT, NTFS, and extension 4. So going from the bottom, extension 4 you may be familiar with. If not, it's a Linux type of file system. And you need to think about permissions when you use those. They're also not compatible with Microsoft Windows and Macs. So it won't be, you won't be able to view those. So you may want to think about the other file formats. So what is FAT32? FAT32 is File Allocation Table 32. And it's, well, it's mostly compatible with everybody. You can also use XFAT. The next thing I want to talk about is the label itself. It has a space in here, USB space stick. That's generic label. I name my, my systems or backups or drives with no spaces in them. Okay, so um, you'll see like this says 250 backup one. There's no spaces in that name and the backup NVMe one has no spaces either. So may I suggest, suggest that you eliminate spaces when you name these things. The stick formatter tool, I believe, defaults to uppercase letters anyways. So I'll call mine USB back one. I could have called it two or three or four or whatever. So you can format that with FAT32. And the reason I'm going to use that format is because I'm going to talk about not only just making simple backups, but also utilizing this to transport files over to the Mac and the Microsoft. All right. Let's talk about a tool called Backup Tool. I'm only going to concentrate on the upper portion of the backup tool. 
you will have this installed on your Linux Mint Cinnamon desktops. I don't care if you're running Cinnamon, um, the Edge version, and possibly even LMDE6. I'll talk about these guys today. So I'm going to pull these out. These are just shortcuts. So if you're searching for that tool, type in back, you will be able to find that immediately. The backup tool that is. You can right click, add it to your panel, desktop or favorites. You can also drag and drop and also downstairs if you like. So I'm going to open this tool. And now let's talk about backups. So Bob is our user guy for today. Uh, it's just a made up name and Bob would like to make some copies of this stuff to this device here. So we're going to click backup now. Where do you want to place your backups? The default is uh, your, your backup folder in your home folder. Is that the best place to put that? Maybe your drive is old. Maybe it's been spinning for a while. So um, well, I want you to think about this though. Where are you backing up your, your files, your personal files? Are they important to you? Maybe you want to back them up to a different device than your current booted in drive. I'm going to put this one on this nice USB backup drive that's not part of my regular system, right? So I'm going to click that and go to other. And I'm going to pick this clean, nice USB back one as my guinea pig for backing up my files using the backup tool. So that's where it's going to end up at. Then I'm going to go forward. Now, please add the files or directories below to exclude, to exclude from the backup. So basically it's going to select everything in here except for whatever is listed in here. You can add more exclusions if you like, but it's going to ex exclude document backups. If you want some more excluded, you can click that. Just wanted to let you know that normally this is on by default. So it's going to copy all my goodies in here, right? So I'm going to click next. What's the next option? Hidden files, hidden folders located in the root of your home directory are not included by default. This could be a little bit misleading to some folks. So first of all, the, the word directory is just another name for folder. The root just means everything in here. So everything in your home folder, basically, that has hidden files or hidden folders. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go full screen and uh, I'm going to try to go full screen anyways. So I have uh, Bob as our user for today, made up name, and I'm going to resize this on the fly slightly. He has lots of folders, but there's actually more stuff in here. So I'm going to use control H to show you the more stuff. There's too much stuff off the screen, so I have to resize this back. So this command is very common on all modern Linux file managers, Control H, to show hidden stuff, hidden files and directories, or another name for directories, folders. Anything with a dot in front of it. So that's a hidden directory, that's a hidden directory. And you may have seen some of my videos what to add uh, well, mouse cursors or mouse pointers, they normally go here. But I also have like uh, bash or born again shell history with a dot. That's my commands out of terminal, for instance, the history of it. So there's a lot of history and uh, sorry, it's a lot of, there's a lot of files in here. You normally don't want to back up your complete home folder unless you've got lots of room. All right, I'm going to pull this down to make this smaller and pull it to the side. So this is hidden files, hidden folders. I don't want them. So by default, it doesn't select them unless you want to include them manually. So far, so clear. I'm going to hit apply. Now it's crunching that data and it's going to dump them into that. So this was so quick, so I'm going to erase this and do this again so you can see this when it's blank. So I'm going to click this one more time and walk through the procedure of backup. Click that from backups to other, select the other, in this case, whatever the name of your drive is, or USB stick, and hit forward. And leave the default. I want to exclude the document backups if I had some previous. Hit forward. Leave this alone unless you want to back up your hidden stuff. And then when I hit apply, it starts making this. And then it'll change the icon when it finishes. All right, so this is called a tar file. It's kind of like if you want to think about a big box. It takes all the files and kind of tosses them in there. So it's a tape archive in Unix terms. So all this stuff, you're probably thinking, oh, there's just a couple of things in there. Actually not. It's a whole bunch of stuff in there. In this case, 582 megabytes worth of stuff. 
So I'm going to open this up by double clicking. Now, before I do that, I want to just talk about the behavior, not yours, of this file manager. I make mention of this occasionally on all of my videos. The behavior for this file manager is set for double click, not single. Also, the desktop is the same. Okay, I'm going to double click. So this is the big box here called 23 today's date something something backup.tar. Everything in the box. Got the documents, the downloads, the icons, the junk, the music, the pictures, and blah, blah, blah. So there are some files when you try to extract them out of here or pull them out of here. Uh, they don't extract nicely, but a lot of them will extract just fine. So I'm going to open up the documents folder and pull out a couple of files to the desktop. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging. So as you can see, there's no thumbnails on these things. As soon as I do that, you can start saying thumbnails. Uh, which one do you want to use? I'll use this one. I'll switch this up. I'll throw a couple of images in there too while I'm at it. Okay. I think it's almost the same video. I'm sorry, the same samples that I pulled on my last video. Uh, in either case, though, I think that's enough file for me to play with. Uh, a lot of times with music files, though, they don't uh, extract nicely when you're doing it this way. So I'm going to try to remember to um, show you how to do a restore on the next using that same tool. But we're first just going to play with these for a second. All right, so I pulled these out of the box, just a couple of individual ones to have some fun. So since I have double click turned on, I can single click on these things and hit the space bar to get a preview. Then I can move my mouse cursor here to get a full screen. I like nature pictures, I don't know about you. So space bar to open to get a preview, space bar to close, click that one, space bar to open, and I can go full screen on the butterfly, space bar to close. I'm gonna skip over this one and go to the PDF and hit the space bar, and I'm gonna pull this up so you can see it. I'm using a standard computer mouse. Um, this one happens to be um, USB, but you can certainly use a wired one with a scroll wheel, you can scroll. You can also zoom in and out holding the control key. A couple of tips in there for you. Spacebar to close. Regular text file. Spacebar to open. Just has a couple of words in it. Spacebar to close. I'm going to double click on this thing. So that myjunk.doc is a Microsoft format. This is LibreOffice Writer. Okay. You can save that also in Microsoft formats as a save as. You can see that right there. The defaults usually ODT, OTT. O-D-T, O-T-T. -T. Oh, that sounds redundant. Uh, yes, I do have a strange sense of humor when it comes to certain things. All right, now that you can see that I pulled a couple of things out of the box. All right, so this is a, um, what is this thing called? It's a tape archive in Unix terms. TAR. All right, so if I click in here once and hit Control a, it will select everything and I can hit the delete key on my keyboard to eliminate all of these. I can also click and hold and drag my mouse cursor across and down to select them also and hit delete. Are these uh, tar files nice and viewable on your Microsoft and Mac systems? Probably not so much. They're not friendly. But they're a nice uh, backup tool for like Linux. So let me show you a different method. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the same drive, so I'm going to eliminate that now that you know. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not done yet. I apologize. We're going to talk about the restore tool using the same file. I apologize. Please select backup to restore. I'll find the source, which is in this case, that guy. And now I have some options of doing uh, only restore missing files, overwrite, and so forth and so on. And I can proceed forward to do the restore part of this tool. So you have restore and backup portion of it for that tar file, the big box. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of it. We're going to still use the same drive. Now you can think about this tool that I'm about to show you for two purposes. You can use it for backup and you can also put uh, files on here for like documents and pictures for you to utilize somewhere else, such as maybe Microsoft Windows or Apple Macs, if you want to share files, if you're into sharing files on your own systems, of course. Now, I will um, basically talk about a tool in here that is called GR Sync. And after this, I'll talk about script files for your more adventuresome users. I'll show you those from scratch also. 
So GRSync, I'm just going to open this temporarily, is graphical rsync. So time shift, if you're not familiar with that, is a tool that you're asked to activate during installation. Time shift is actually running with rsync for default. Okay. And uh, you're asked to, uh, you know, do a location and a schedule. More likely you picked five and then uh, you probably skipped over users and you went, I'm done and you forgot all about this part. So a uh, time shift is uh, really meant to restore your system files by default. By default, it excludes, excludes, not includes your home folders. I have multiple users here. We have Bob, Root, T-Man, Mr. Senior, and Mary, all getting their files excluded from this time shift backup. So it, it, this tool here is generally viewed as something to restore your system files, but it uses rsync. You can see what I have for backups. I have one Vanessa, previous version of Mint, Cinnamon Desktop, and now I have Victoria. Okay. So um, if you are, are looking to, um, let's say you can't log into your system. The first thing people reach for is their installation media and start reformatting the drive. And you forget all about this tool. I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying some folks forget all about TimeShift because it runs in the background after you activate it. And it's quietly making these backups. As long as you stayed logged into your system for more than five or 10 minutes, in about a week, you will see five of these in here if you open this tool up. Now, TimeShift is found on your installation media. Your live copy that you used to install, well, your Cinnamon desktop, maybe you installed also maybe Mate or XFCE or LMDE6. TimeShift is found on all of those installation media. You boot up your installation media, you go find TI, TimeShift, and you open it. It won't request a password. It will start the, the wizard up and you just hit finish. Providing your drive, your drive is bootable and uh, usable, it will scan your hard drive. Then you pick a restore point. And then in about 10 minutes, instead of reinstalling all of your applications and all your other goodies, you're back to where you were, instead of reinstalling the whole system. This will save your bacon at some point. I've used it several times. Sometimes I abuse things, and it's always good to have an option to restore instead of reinstall. All right, so this is using rsync. So I'm gonna talk about a tool which you can get from Software Manager. You can also install it through Synaptic or even Terminal. But more importantly, what I'm looking for is a tool that is not installed by default called grsync. It is um, graphical rsync, front end for rsync. rsync is remote sync. That is what TimeShift is using. All right, system package. 675 kilobytes you can install that if you want to use it i'm going to show you how to use it i'm also going to show you how to remove files from your source i'm sorry your destination so let's type in gr we have the option of maybe opening it directly type in gr let's make a shortcut two ways right click add to panel desktop or favorites you can also drag and drag and then I will open this here. So under default conditions, using the basic options, advanced and extras, I'm gonna leave all this alone and then I'll talk about deleting files on the destination device. So this is what I call fluff. You have source and destination. You got one, two items at a time. You can save them and call them whatever name you want. It, to me, it's just fluff. But again, this, at least that's an option for you in case you wanna save stuff. But I'm going to do open. And what are we going to copy? Or what's a common thing that we make copies of? Pictures maybe, right? And uh, we're going to send that to that nice USB back one that's formatted with FAT32. So I got source and destination. I'm going to hit the play button. So now it's making a complete backup of my pictures folder. For what kind of purposes? Well, for either backup purposes or sharing files. Since it's formatted with FAT32, I can open this on a Microsoft system or even a Mac. So that's one purpose for this, or just general backups. So I'm going to now click open another folder called Documents. 
That's another common thing that people share, possibly. So once these folders are created on the backup device using rsync, it doesn't need to be recreated unless you alter them. And I'm going to show you several different methods here. So let's go to the original documents and you can see these are identical currently. Sorry, clicked on the wrong drive again. I'm not using that one. I'm using the bottom one. So we're going to look at two folders and several files, two folders and several files. The icons are different sizes, by the way, I can make them jumbo and I can make these dinky over here if you like, just to give you the examples. They're independently resized on this file manager if you're not familiar with Nemo. All right, in either case, I'll make it to a comfortable size and I'll resize these back up. So right now we have a exact duplicate of these. Now I'm gonna add some files. I'm gonna create a text document called, uh, I don't know, B, because I can. And then I'll throw in some text. And I'll just say test one. I'll make this larger for you. So test one is what I'm gonna throw into that text file and save it. So that's a new file. So I'm gonna open this back up. Okay, and I'll resize that up just slightly. So I'm gonna hit this play button. Providing I have the source and destination set, I can hit play and that file now appears over here. So B now currently has the word test one in it, right? You can see that. I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna alter this file. I'm gonna first make this large and then I'm gonna click a couple of lines down and type in test two, just to alter things and make sure that I save the file so it's saved. I'm gonna close that. So that's now 17 bytes and this one is eight bytes. I am going to hit play because I'm still in documents USB back one. So this will grow. Now it didn't need to replicate anything else. That's what makes rsync faster the second time. So rsync works this way. It looks at the attributes, the attributes of your folders and files. And if it sees no change, it sees no necessity of replicating those extra files in here. If it finds one that's missing, it replicates it. If it finds one that's altered, it replicates it. Okay, I will talk about deleting files in a second. So we're good on that. All right, so we have two folders to play with. We have pictures, now let's do a third. We will use music this time and we will sync it. Now it's copying music and however long it takes. So some of your music folders may be several gigabytes, maybe some of the pictures, maybe also several gigabytes. And you will find that this method is a lot faster when you create these one time only and then subsequently sync them up instead of recreating these constantly over and over again by cutting and pasting these files on your USB devices. You will find our sync is a lot faster because it doesn't need to re-replicate these. It only replicates the stuff that is changed or removed if I use the delete option. All right, so I have an exact copy of music. Hello world. And I'm gonna use that one to delete on my original music, Bob's music folder. I'm gonna get rid of that album, Hello World. Now I got three. This still has four. I'm gonna turn this option on and click the advance and that. There are plenty of options to look up on the internet, by the way, and I encourage that you do that for yourself. So I'm going to use delete on destination with the option of always check some, and I'm going to hit the play button, but not yet. So this is music with three albums. I deleted the hello world, but it's still sitting in here. So if you want that files to be synced up and remove that, then choose this option wisely because it will remove it. I'm gonna hit play with music and that source, source and destination. Now that is gone. It doesn't matter which folder I'm syncing up. It all depends on your selection here. So if I wanted to do this with documents, I would select that. And uh, now I'm going to check out my documents on the backup device first. So we have, um, Let's create another one in the original. We'll just call that one C. And uh, I will not put anything in this one. I'll just leave it at zero bytes. So um, again, these are acceptable file formats for text files. So we have uh, B and C sitting here, right? 
and I'm currently sitting at just B. So let me sync this document to that device. So I have the B and C files here. Now I'm going to go to the original and dump the these two files right here. So I'm going to just drag it. I'm going to come in here and click a box through these. I could also just click and hold the control key down and that and hit delete. It's sometimes sensitive. So anyways, they've been removed and uh, they're still here, right? So I'm going to close this now that I have this on and I re redo this. It'll eliminate these two on my backup drive. So you got to be careful when you use this one, if that's your intent, because keep in mind, normally if you're using the other setting with this off, it's making copies of your stuff to that device, but it's also editing at the same time, but it's not removing files. And there's a lot of reasons why this is off by default, because people like that, and some people not so much. Some people like to have the files removed. So that's why I'm showing you both options. But in either case, you can see they're in sync. If I use this option. Okay. Hopefully this was all clear. Now, the next option I'm going to show is script files. Maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm going to show you this completely from scratch. I'm going to wipe the drive out and still use the same and hit control N as in Nancy. And then I will bounce this up against the wall here or try to and grab a hold of this and do the same. So I have full size two panes using that as my backup that's empty. And then I'm going to click document script files. I have several examples to show you today. These are all done with a text editor. None of them are done with a word processor. So I want to open the first one up. All right, this one happens to be done with XAD. I actually used Kate when I created this, but that's okay. It's whatever text editor you want to use, not a word processor. I will enlarge this for you. So these files are done with the text editor, and the only thing you need is one bin bash line. That would be pound explanation point no space forward slash bin no space forward slash bash. What does that bash thing stand for? Born again shell. So rsync again, it comes up. You used it in grsync. Also, time shift is using rsync. Rsync is found under the hood on a lot of Linux distros. Lucky Backup uses also rsync as an example. So what does this dash A mean? It's the archive option. There are many options with rsync. I do encourage that you look this up yourself on the internet. So that would be the option I'm using, the dash A, archive. It's also very powerful. I'm going to pull this down for a second to let you see this says home Bob documents. That represents the tilde part of that. This is my source. Instead of me typing home Bob, I put a tilde in there. This is very common practice with folks that write script files. So it's tilde forward slash documents, another forward slash in here. Sometimes that's an option, but I want at least one space in here. Some folks put two. That's okay. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I usually just put one. So this part here represents the name of my device. This one here I happen to be using that nice USB back one. I'm going to toggle this entry to let you see what it act is actually called. And sometimes you'll see numbers in here. So whatever your device is called, that's what you're backing up to. According to this thing, you can also highlight these things and right click and copy them and then paste them in here. All right, so now that you understand that this is the destination device, media Bob USB back one in this case. So what is this extra forward slash back? That's just going to create a folder on this backup device to put those documents into. There are no other options that I'm using on this one. This has no deletions. This will only copy files and it will keep copying files even after they changed. It won't delete anything though. I'm going to actually uh, close this and run it. And I'll show you an important step here in a minute too that you need to do to your file after you write these script files. So I just made a backup. Okay. So there are two folders and X amount of files, just like in here. Yes, the icons can be resized on the fly and they're independent. So if you make these jumbo here, these could be dinky in here. 
Okay, so if I open this, I'll make them tiny. You can see the difference. Okay, you get the idea. I'm just doing this on the fly. Hopefully you've seen some of my videos doing this. Okay, we're good to go on that. All right, I'm gonna wipe this out. Back to a clean drive. So doc2 contains a statement in here that's a little different. So it's still using the bin bash statement with an rsync A for documents going over to media, blah, 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 blah. And the folder name on this one is called back2 with a dash dash delete command. The dash dash delete command actually will remove things. What that would do is if I have documents already synced up to a backup two on this device, when I rerun this script, it will actually remove those files from backup two if I had removed something. Uh, another example of this would be, I'm gonna use the next one over. This one has multiple statements. So I'm gonna be back making backups of uh, documents, music, pictures to a folder called doc short for documents and music is music and then pictures for pics with a dash dash delete on the end. What that allows me to do is uh, I can actually do deletions on the destination device. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click and I'm going to run this and it's going to create three folders because that's what my script is doing. I could use five or six or eight folders if I like. But However long this is going to take, this is no slower than GRSync or even TimeShift. It's RSync. RSync is RSync. It's all depending on the speed of your devices. So it's making an exact duplicate of my pictures, my music, and my docs. I could go in there and add in my originals. I'll add the uh, I'll add a B document, and uh, we'll toss in uh, some text. And we'll save the file. And I think you get the idea probably from here. So I will resync that. Okay, so I added the B file. Didn't have to replicate anything else. I'll go with uh, music. I'll add an album. I'm not gonna put anything in there. I'm just gonna create the folder. And we are going to um, rerun that. So now you can see the extra folder in here. Now, since I used this script file, sorry, I didn't mean to hit properties. I meant to hit display. Since I'm using the double dash delete on the back end of all of these, and all this is is one space double dash delete, I can delete files on the destination device now using those three folders examples. So right now I am going to go to the source of uh, music and delete hello world. And at the same time, I'm gonna go here and delete uh, B. So currently, those are still listed here. The hello world, backup one. Actually, I'll just do it this way. And the B, and I'm gonna rerun this. I'll leave this one open. B is now removed, and I will go to music, and the album has been removed. So that's what the double dash delete does. So uh, what does this one do? This one actually is a copy of this one. So another example for you, be very careful about after you create these things to remember to make sure that's checked. Otherwise, if you don't do this, when you try to double click, it opens this in a text editor. So it, it doesn't perform anything. But when you do this, allow executing file as a program, you'll get the run statement because it's being ran as an executable. In other words, you can run it or display it. Right click, copy, and paste. I made an exact duplicate of that for what purpose, you might ask. So I don't have to retype everything. Now, pretend I have another device that says USB back two and it's mounted. And I wanted to use the same script file. I just made a copy of number four. And I wanted to grab all of the same statements. Control C as in Charlie. And I normally don't put spaces in here, but I will just to discern the difference. Again, I normally don't leave a gap in here. But I am going to only make a couple of changes in here. I'm going to call this one two. Click in here. 
backspace two, click in here, backspace two, and then save the file. Again, I normally don't, you know, do the space thing. Then I'm gonna turn around and call it something else. What do we wanna call this? We can call it A if you like. So A will now make a copy of that. And if you noticed, it had the executable bit already on it. I didn't have to turn it on because I made a copy of number four. And all I did was make some changes to it. So this is going to our sync the standard stuff, documents, music, and pictures to that device with the dash delete commands. And I can put these in the order that I want. If I wanted pictures first, I put pictures first. Music last, whatever. This also, again, should probably be under here, but I did it for separation so you can see it, is it makes the same set of copies of the document music and pictures, but it's going to USB back to device that currently may be mounted on here. Again, just pretend there's another device here called USB back to mounted. So this script will be doing two things. It'll finish up doing these three, then it'll move to the next three. You can also remove the delete commands off of this one also. Pretend these are two different devices, USB 1, USB 2, maybe thumb drives, if your files are small enough, if you have enough room on, the, on these uh, sticks. But I'm just showing you this as an example. So there's lots of ways to do these kind of things. Thank you for watching.